Okay, thank you. Thank you. I would like to start thanking the organizers for, for this nice workshop and also my co-authors, Noelia Otero and Marco Gaetani, who couldn't be here. And what I want to talk today is about some decadal predictions of the Sahelian rainfall. So uh, in the last and the previous two talks, we've been already uh, looking at the uh, West African monsoon and in particular to the Sahel rainfall because of this uh, uh, great uh, trends with the drought and, and the partial recovery. And, and the idea of our work is uh, could part of this decadal uh, variability, this decadal signal, could, could it have been predictive? So there have been already several works. I'm put here just an example, but there have already been at least, uh, I think, uh, three at least or four works looking at decadal predictions of the Sahelian rainfall. Uh, this example I'm putting here uh, is shown just for one model, the Canadian, that it shows some, some head that, the, that it, it could have been predictable. Uh, though this is quite uh, model dependent. Uh, one of the things is that the, the previous works were focused on uh, rainfall direct outputs. But uh, um, typically, uh, general circulation models, the, the atmospheric part at least, is known to, to have some problems, depending on the model, with the uh, precipitation outputs, while um, uh, dynamical variables are typically better reproduced. So here I put an example from a paper of uh, Nijade and collaborators in 2011, in which they are showing it's just an AMIP uh, type of simulation in which uh, you have the atmospheric model driven by uh, observed SSTs. And in black, uh, in black bars, you can see the skill, these are for different models, the skill in interannual variability, in capturing the interannual variability of the Sahel. Uh, and it's quite model dependent. Uh, and um, some models are skillful, some models are not. But when they look at uh, dynamical variables, this is uh, represented here by the white uh, uh, bars, and they typically show better performance. So the idea of our work we, was to try to predict Sahelian rainfall, but instead with the uh, direct rainfall outputs, looking at uh, uh, dynamic variables. Um, so that was the main aim. Studying uh, this skill, we focused on, on the uh, CMIP5 models uh, on summer. Um, and we also evaluated the additional skill coming from the initialization, if it makes sense to do decadal predictions. So uh, regarding the data we used, we looked at uh, CMIP5 simulations to experiments, the decadal handcast or decadal predictions. We've um, I guess this maybe belongs more to tomorrow, but we've already had some talks about decadal predictions last uh, yesterday. So uh, in the CMIP5, uh, what they do is uh, every five years, they um, uh, uh, issue a model prediction that lasts, that runs from uh, for uh, 10 years. So in 1960, they, they launch the, uh, the, uh, the model. And it runs up to 1970. In 1965, they do the same, and it runs up to 1975, and so forth. That's, that's the uh, core uh, uh, predictions. Um, uh, and the, the, the important thing is that uh, they have all four things, but they are initialized. This is in 1960. They were fed, uh, fed with the uh, actual state of the of the atmosphere and of the ocean mainly. And then, uh, just to compare if this makes sense or not to all this effort of modeling, we, we compare the results with uh, historical simulations that have all four scenes but are not initialized. So there are typically a couple runs that started in pre-industrial uh, times, typically 1850, and they just run on. Um, and we compare with observations, with pre precipitation observations and uh, reanalysis data. So, uh, as I was talking, uh, uh, saying before, we wanted to, to, to uh, um, particularly look at the potential of using wind fields. Um, so, uh, for the West African monsoon, it has been shown, uh, there are many studies, uh, I got here one from Fontaine and collaborators in 1995, in which uh, they show that there is quite a link 
uh, of the strength of the monsoon uh, with uh, the uh, um, uh, sonal jets. In particular, uh, I'm going to highlight here two of the jets, the west uh, southerly wind monsoons and the tropical easterly jet. This is a plot of sonal winds and this is uh, pressure levels. So this is up and this is down and this is latitude. So in this paper of Fontaine, uh, they, they show that uh, when you have a, 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 a strong monsoon, you have uh, more rainfall over the, uh, over the Sahel, and that typically comes with a stronger tropical easterly jet and a stronger west, uh, westerly south monsoon. Uh, so they define an index, which is called West African Monsoon Index, WAMI, and it's uh, the modulus at uh, low levels minus the uh, wind, sonal wind at high levels. Um, and this in definition is independent from rainfall, but it's quite related to rainfall. Uh, when you have a stronger tropical easterly uh, jet and a strong westerly southwest uh, winds, you have more Sahelian rainfall. Um, and in our work, we uh, chose uh, the actual region where to do the averages of these quantities depending on the model by applying and uh, combine UF analysis of high levels and low levels. So these are just some results. Uh, um, these are uh, for the uh, uh, two reanalysis products we used, the uh, uh, low level um, um, Oh, sorry, the low level, uh, um, um, ah, so the, um, the modulus of the winds, sorry, I uh, couldn't, the modulus of the winds had low levels uh, from uh, ERA and NCEPT that go with the first combined EOF uh, pattern. And here is uh, for some of the models. We analyzed several, we analyzed 14. I just put here an example. So you can see that uh, the, the stronger monsoons in the, in the first uh, mode are, uh, depend a bit on, on the uh, data set you analyze. So we, we chose the area depending on, on this uh, first mode. And this first mode in the upper levels goes with increased tropical easterly jet. And, uh, and, and also in the, uh, in the models. And I don't show it here, but it typically goes with increased Sahel rainfall in the observations. So um, what about the scale of the models? In this plot that I guess we'll see more tomorrow, I'm, I'm plotting one of the measures of scale, which uh, it's the anomaly correlation coefficient here in the uh, y-axis. And each color is for one model of the, for, out of the 14, and we also did a multi-model uh, ensemble. So now we have 15. And then in the X uh, 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 axis, I'm plotting a different uh, lead time. So in the first column, the first points are showing what's the anomaly correlation coefficient for the one to four years lead time. And the second is for the two to five years lead time, etc. And this panel is for the decalal Henkest, and this one is for the historical uh, simulations. So in general, we can see better scores for the decalal simulations, those that, those that are initialized. Um, here, I want to stress that I'm comparing the WAMI uh, the, uh, from the simulations with the observed uh, Sahelian precipitation index from uh, CRU data. Uh, in general, there are some models that stand out as statistically significant, at least in some, uh, in some uh, lead times, which are uh, ex uh, written here. And some of them uh, we also tested, but, and they, were not, uh, they didn't give a, stat uh, a skill when looking at uh, their rainfall outputs instead of the uh, WAMI index. So... Um, we also thought about, this was an idea of one of the reviewers, which I, I thank. He, he suggested to look also at probabilistic scores. Uh, the only thing is that we didn't have, um, given the um, experimental setup of CMIP5, you don't really have that much data. So this is just an average score, taking into account the 14 models and uh, all the elite times. Uh, so typically, uh, we, we chose uh, to follow a tertial category, just trying to predict above normal, normal, and below normal categories. 
and uh, you typically want a big, uh, a strong hit rate. This is, you want to issue uh, an alarm, alarm rightly, you want to, to predict it. And you want a low false alarm rate. This is when, when a, you issue a, uh, uh, this alar false alarm rate is a fraction of times that you issued wrongly um, an alarm. So you typically plot both uh, the hit rate uh, uh, against the false alarm rate, and you want to be uh, over this this part of the. Uh, you want to to have higher scores of the hit rate uh, rather than uh, of the false alarm rate. Uh, so this is uh, typically um, um, built for different uh, thresholds of probability, and then you have your your uh, your rock curve. So we can see for the uh, decadal that you typically for the above and below uh, categories, you are above the diagonal, so you are having quite some skill. Uh, you can also measure this as, the, as twice the area underneath the curves, between the curves and the diagonal. And if you do this, you have these scores here. We, we see the same information. But I can also show for the historical ones that you, you typically have less, uh, less skill. Uh, yeah. So, um, sorry, what I showed before was uh, testing our WAMI index uh, against observed in, uh, rainfall. But we also thought of, of testing our WAMI index uh, against the WAMI in observation. So we thought of using the uh, NSEP uh, and ERA 40 reanalysis. So when you do the same um, uh, scores that I showed before, but with uh, NSEP, you typically find a decrease of skill. But when you do it with ERA 40, it, there is a complete uh, loss of skill. So we looked a bit into it. Why, why would we have this loss of skill? What's happening here? And uh, to make a long story short, uh, the main uh, problem wa was coming from the modulus at low level. So here I'm plotting uh, for uh, in time the uh, anomalies, the standardized anomalies of uh, rainfall from CRU data, which is in, in black. And then the modulus of the wind uh, coming from the uh, uh, NSEP in green and from the ERA 40 in, in mm, let's call it orange. Um, these are standardized anomalies, as I was saying, and it's the decadal component. So it was some low frequency filtering with a running mean. And we can see that uh, after, uh, let's say, 1997, ERA 40 modulus drops down, and this gives you, very, um, it, this gives you a de decrease of the skill that uh, you can find when comparing with this data set. And uh, last, uh, we were thinking of what are the perspectives, so because we have these decadal uh, predictions, so what is uh, expectable from these uh, in the near future? So, uh, unfortunately, not all of the uh, uh, simulations or not all of the models gave the 2010 uh, initialized simulation. But what we had, what, what we had, uh, I plotted here the, uh, in different lines, but I want you to focus on this last part. Uh, it's a different subset of uh, uh, multimodal ensemble means, but they are both uh, showing a slight increase uh, with respect to the uh, uh, years before. This would be the 2011 to 2015 uh, uh, means. So with this, I conclude. Uh, the, the first idea is that um, we could have predicted uh, part of uh, the decadal variability of Sahelian rainfall using initialized uh, simulations. Uh, the, uh, because the uh, skill of the initialized is generally better than the uh, historical one. However, uh, this is quite model dependent. Not all models are skillful. And, uh, some, for some models, using uh, the dynamics instead of the uh, rainfall outputs can give you uh, increased skills. So we really recommend a two-fold approach if possible, uh, looking at both rainfall and uh, dynamic variables. And uh, uh, we should be cautious when using um, low-level uh, winds in, in era 40 for decadal purposes. And uh, just the, the perspective for next uh, coming years is a bit of a, a slight recovery of Sahelian rainfall with uh, respect to the last uh, ones. So thank, uh, thank you all for your attention. And I accept any comments and questions you may have.